Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and welcome to the English News of Phuc Radio Television Station and Newspaper. I'm Hưng Kek and following are the headlines at usual. Bình Phước prioritize development of small-scale industrial zone. Integrating human rights into the education curriculum. Prime Minister order a force to settle difficulties facing businesses. U.S. consulting firm optimistic about Vietnam's economic outlooks. Vietnam's coconuts export to write remarkably. And now other details, located in the southern key economic region and as a gateway between Southeast Vietnam, the Central Highlands and Cambodia. Binh Phuc leverage its strategic locations, abundant lands and flexible investment policy to attract investors. To capitalize on investment trends and drive growth, Binh Phuc aims to develop 8,290 hectares of industrial parks, 25,864 hectares of economic zones, and 730 hectares of industrial clusters by 2025, with an investment rate of 3 to $3.5 million per hectare. By 2030, these targets will expand to 11,522 hectares of industrial parks and 1,279 hectares of industrial clusters, with investment rates reaching $3.5 to $4 million per hectare. The province prioritizes small industrial zones under 500 hectares and medium-sized zones between 500 and 1,000 hectares avoiding the development of large zones over 1,000 hectares. By 2030, Bing Phuc aims to become a modern industrial province, actively seeking investment in the industrial sector. Provincial leadership also emphasized the four good foundations, good infrastructure, skilled workforce, favorable policies, and efficient public services to meet investor needs in industrial and economic zones. In 2023, the People Committee of Binh Phuc Province launched a plan to integrate human rights education into the provincial curriculum for 2023-2025. After a successful first year, the Department of Education and Training aimed to improve implementation in the 2024-2025 academic years. The department will focus on promoting the understanding and thoroughly implementation of human rights education in line with official directives and guidelines to raise awareness of its importance. This includes investing in infrastructure, upgrading equipment, and providing training to enhance the expertise of preschool teachers and those teaching ethics, civic education, law, and related subjects. Efforts will also be made to foster a positive cultural environment in schools. Additionally, the department will strengthen cooperation between schools, families, and the wider community in human rights education. It will lead efforts to coordinate with other departments, agencies, organizations, and local authorities to ensure comprehensive and effective human rights education across the province. Buyamup National Park often offers to add a green slung of southern Vietnam, a home to rare species of flora and fauna, and serves as a hub for scientific research, environmental education, and ecotourism. In recent years, the park has been well managed and protected, thanks in large part to contribution from local ethnic minority communities. In 2024, the Bozamup National Park Management Board signed forest protection contracts with 11 communities and five border guard stations, covering more than 23,000 hectares. Most members of these community groups are ethnic minorities living in the buffer zones around the forest. By living and working alongside park ranchers, they actively have raised awareness and encourage locals to follow forest protection regulations. Since the introduction of these contracts, illegal lodging and poaching have been significantly reduced, and efforts to prevent forest fires have been strengthened. 
The stability of the protected forest area has improved, and the livelihoods of the contract families have been enhanced, motivating more households to participate in forest protection efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, a conference was held on September the 21st with the participation of the leader of a large-scale private company. Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin attended the event. Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin on September 21st asked the Deputy Prime Ministers, Ministers, and heads of the sectors to thoroughly deal with difficulties facing businesses. Chairing a meeting, between cabinet members and leaders, of 12 leading private economic groups and enterprises on measures to boost the country's socio-economic development, he also noted that this meeting, the first of its kind held so far, shows the party and state's great attention to private businesses, which he described as an important driving force for the growth of the national economy. Currently, Vietnam has more than 930,000 operating businesses, 98% of which are small and medium-sized. At the meeting, cabinet members looked into businesses' ideas on difficulties facing them and proposals on solutions. Prime Minister Chin pledged that the government will continue to build in perfect mechanisms for businesses' smooth operation and drastically cut down administrative procedures. He also expected businesses to take the lead in infrastructure development, especially digital, transport, socioeconomic, cultural and green infrastructure. On the same day, Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin attended a conference with the participation of the leader of big private banks. More details are in the following report. Cabinet members and leaders of 13 joint stock commercial banks convened to seek measures to promote national socio-economic development. Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin said, so far, the country has maintained macroeconomic stability reigning in inflation and ensuring major balances. However, Storm Yagi has caused serious losses in human lives and property, leading to a stagnation in production and business activities. He expressed his hope that banks will propose new policies to enable the country to adapt to this situation. The leader asked for the bank's support during this hard time, especially in interest rates, helping the people and businesses overcome current difficulties. In the first eight months of this year, the central bank has applied flexible monetary policies, harmonizing interest rates and exchange rates, and promoting credit growth. As of September 17, credit growth of the whole system had expanded 7.38% compared to the end of 2023, with the private joint stock commercial banks recording a 8.6% rise, accounting for 45% of market share, the highest increase in the whole system. Vietnam continued at the region's top performing economy, growing at 6.9% according to McKinsey's and Company, a U.S. multinational strategy and management consulting firm. In its recent report, the company wrote that Vietnam's economy accelerated in the second quarter, as its GDP growth rose by 6.9%, with the industry and service sectors being the largest contributors. The export sector continued its growth, supported by key sectors including smartphones, electronics, and textiles. The report also highlighted that FDI achieved significant growth this quarter, further cementing Vietnam as a credible investment destination. According to the firm, total FDI registered reached 15.2 billion US dollars in the first half of 2024, an increase of 13.1% over the same period last year. The strong performance could spur the country's economy in the immediate quarters, and it supports Vietnam's position as an important investment destination for foreign businesses as they look to diversify their global supply chains, it stressed. Fresh coconuts, a significant contributor to Vietnam's agricultural exports, are poised to make a substantial impact on the nation's economy through increased shipment to China. According to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, 
the recently signed protocol on phytosanitary requirements for Vietnamese fresh coconuts exported to China will enable more sustainable and large-scale access to this vast market. Beyond China, demand for Vietnamese coconuts is also strong in India and the Middle East. Vietnam's position in the global coconut market is impressive, ranking sixth among the top 10 countries in terms of cultivation area and output. With roughly 200,000 hectares of coconut plantations, the country produces 2.1 million tons of coconuts annually. Vietnam aims to expand coconut cultivation area by 2030. The Mekong Delta will account for the majority of this expansion, with 170,000 to 175,000 hectares, while the coastal south-central region will have 16,000 to 20,000 hectares. And that's all for today on the news of Binfuk Radio, television stations and newspaper. Once again, thank you for watching and goodbye for now.